in, in the way uh, that I want you to look at things and see things and, and react to things, then it is enough to get you through whatever may come. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Uh, what was it that God was doing here with Paul? What was it that, that, that uh, God wanted to accomplish through Paul uh, when he allowed this thing to be in his body, when he allowed this thing uh, uh, to continue and not to heal it and told him that his grace, his influence was sufficient uh, because his strength was made perfect in weakness. What was it that God was trying to do or say or, or accomplish in Paul? He was trying to get Paul to understand. It's not in you. You don't have it. It's in me. When you realize that you ain't all that, when you realize that you can't do it within yourself, when you realize uh, that you don't have all the answers, then my strength can take over. Then my strength can get you through. Uh, he put Paul, allowed Paul to go through this stuff, allowed Paul to deal with this and not to heal it so that Paul would get strong in Christ. So that Paul would depend on uh, 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 the strength of Christ and not on his own self. And, and we may think and we may say, well, Paul wasn't that kind of a person. He was a person. He was a human being. He was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He learned at Gamaliel's feet. His family was a uh, 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 in the right tribe. Uh, he had all this education. Uh, he had all this learning. He, it would be easy for Paul to get puffed up and to get some pride. And, and just because God chose to use him doesn't mean those things weren't still present in him. God has saved you and they're still present in you. You still have that flesh. That's why Paul said in another place, the good that I would, I do not. The evil that I would, not that I do. I see there's a war in me. The flesh against the spirit. And through this, God is showing Paul, my strength, my strength will get you through. My grace is enough to get you through. Not only enough to get you through, but to make you strong in me. So maybe what you're going through, maybe what you're dealing with, uh, maybe the problem that you're going to face uh, somewhere down the road is so that God can teach you to rely more on Him. That God can teach you that only when you realize you can't do it on your own, you don't have the answer, you don't know the way out, then you begin to trust God more. Then you begin to lean on God more. Uh, then you begin uh, to use that strength that comes only from God to overcome of whatever the situation and whatever the circumstance. Uh, maybe that's why you've gone through something, you are going through something, you will go through something, uh, so that God can bring you to that point. Listen, if he had to bring Paul to that point, the one he chose uh, uh, to be the apostle to the Gentile, to set up the churches, and to do all the things that Paul did, uh, the one that he chose, uh, hand-picked, uh, so to speak, to do all these kind of things, if he had to work that way through him, why would he not work through us that way? Right. Allow us to go through things so that we learn to depend on him, so that we learn to lean on him, so that we learn to access that strength that only comes from him. Whether you know it or not, you have an amazing amount of strength dwelling within you. Yeah. But most of us don't access it. We don't access what God has placed within us because we're too dependent on our human way of thinking, on a worldly way of thinking, on a human and a worldly way of looking at things and trying to understand things. We need to quit doing that and allow God uh, influence to... Uh, uh, working us so that we look at it from a, a, a godly perspective. <clears throat> when you're in the middle of the situation, when you're in the middle of the trial, the circumstance, the trouble, the problem, whatever it is, how many times have you ever stopped and said, God, what can I learn from this? Is there something you're trying to show me? Is there something I need to change? Is there something? How many of us do that? Uh, we get so focused on what can I do to fix this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
We get so focused on that, we miss what if Paul, uh, when he prayed these three times uh, uh, to get healed, and, and he didn't get healed, what if uh, uh, he said, well, let me figure this out. There's got to be an answer. I'll go to this doctor, or I'll go to that doctor, or I'll do this, or I'll do that, or I'll do something else. Would he have ever learned that God's grace was sufficient? Because through this, Paul would learn to tap in to God's strength. When we're in that situation, that circumstance, that, that problem, that trouble, that trial, begin to let God show you how to look at it. Show you the next step to take. Show you what it is that you need to do in order to get from it or what God would have you to get from it. Consider it not strange concerning the fiery trial which you are to go through. Because it's in the fire that the gold is purified. If everything was smooth and easy, if that gold never uh, was smelted, melted down, none of the impurities would ever come out. It's the same with us. If we're allowed to be, live a life of comfort and ease, you know what we're going to do? We're going to get weaker. Because... If everything is good and we're living a life of comfort and ease, we begin to depend more on ourselves than we do on God. We depend to trust in our own strength, our own way of thinking, our own way of doing things, more than we do on God. It is in the... How do I put this? When do you cry out to God the most? When you're, in trouble. When you're going through it. If everything was smooth and good all the time, how often would you really cry out to God? You know a lot of us, and I won't call crying out to God, talk out to God, maybe before we go to bed because it's a habit and we think it's something we need to do. Maybe before we take a bite, and I don't understand this, why do we call it grace when we pray over our meal? But maybe we say something then. But when we're in a problem, when we're in a trial, when we're in trouble, we spend a lot of time talking to God. Everybody has probably experienced that. If you've gone through something uh, a bad or something hard or something wrong, you're talking to God a lot. So it's through those things that we... we tend to go to God and because we tend to go to God through those things we can learn from God in those things yeah. if we will if we will it's like I said grace is sufficient but you have to allow grace it's not automatic you have to allow grace God told Paul here my grace is sufficient for you. But Paul had to accept that. Paul could have said, fine, I'll find another way. I will get out of this. Instead of accepting what it is that God was trying to teach him and show him and implant in him. As far as I know, there's nothing to, to contradict the fact that Paul went through this, whatever it was, the rest of his life. But it was for his benefit. So that God could be made strong in Paul. How many of us would like to have God to be strong in us? Mm -hmm. To have the strength of God manifested through us? In order for Paul to do that, he had to be afflicted. We don't know exactly what was wrong with Paul, but I want you to hear what he said. It was given to me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan, to buffet me. You know what it means to buffet? To just pound with your fists. So it wasn't something light. It wasn't something easy. He was being pounded by something. 
We don't know what it was, and it doesn't matter what it was. But all through that, the power of God was manifested in Paul. The strength of God was manifested in Paul. Uh, God worked the way he worked through Paul because Paul was willing to let God work. He was willing to accept the uncomfortable in order to receive what God wanted to do in him. He even got to the point where he said here, Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. When we are weakened by these problems, these situations, these circumstances, it is that point that we can be strong in Christ. It is at that point that the power of God can be manifested through us. So maybe the reason you've gone through or are going through or will go through something is so that God can strengthen you, so that God can manifest himself through you, so that you can learn and understand uh, that in that weakness that this thing has brought me to, God can work if I let him work. But you can't do that in the flesh. You have to allow the grace of God to work through you, the influence of God. And it, it involves all these things I keep saying, how you look at the situation, how you react to the situation, the choices and decisions you make in the situation need to be influenced by God. So in Job's case, and in Paul's case, we see that God allowed these things to come on them for a purpose. God had a reason. And in the end, it benefited them. In the end, they came out better than when they went in. Uh, Paul uh, came out of that situation and lived the rest of his life in the power of God. How many of us would like to live our life in the power of God. Do you believe the same God that dealt with Job, the same God that dealt with Paul, is the same God that you serve? Do you believe that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever? Do you believe that He not only can, but wants to do the same things for his children today as he did for his children in the past. Yeah. Read the things that God did through Paul. And think about what are we doing? What is God doing through us? If it's not everything we would like it to be or, or we think it should be, why not? Why not? I'm not saying this is going to happen. It may be in an extraordinary circumstance, but I don't think so. You have your own opinion. But handkerchiefs were taken from Paul and given to sick people, and they were healed. Why? Because Paul was all that. Because the power of God was manifested through Paul. Because Paul learned, it ain't about me. There's nothing I can do. I don't have the power. I don't have what it takes. I must let God work through me. Paul learned that. We know that up here. We don't live that. You all probably know this scripture. Jesus said, the works that I do shall thou do also, and greater works than these. And I've, I've asked this here before, I know I have. How many of you are doing greater works than Christ did? How many of you are doing the works that Christ did? He said we shall, but we're not. Because we haven't learned how to let God be manifested through us. Let him work through us. Realize 
there's nothing I can do. And I know we don't mean it this way when we say it, but listen, we will say, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. I know some people that, that need to come to church, or I know some people that are lost. I'm going to go do this. I, and I know we're not thinking about it this way, but that's how we go in ourselves a lot of time, thinking we have the words, thinking we know what to say, we know what to do, instead of stopping and allowing God to work through us, letting God uh, influence what we say, what we do, how we treat that, all those kind of things. We haven't learned to do that. And we need to learn to do that. We'll look at one more. This is in the book of Luke, chapter 22. And again, the scripture you all know, I'm sure. The Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Now listen a minute before I go on. Satan has desire. He had to be given permission. He had a desire, but he didn't have the power to fulfill the desire. He had to be given permission to do what he wanted to do to Peter. Jesus said to Peter, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to have you, to sift you as wheat. And again, I want you to remember, God had to allow it. God had to give permission. He goes on, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. Mm -hmm. Satan was allowed, he was given permission to sift Peter as wheat. We don't get any details about what he put Peter through, how long he went through it, uh, or anything like that. But in that time period, do you know what it was to sift wheat? You take a big fork, your wheat's all piled up here, it's still on the stalk, and it's got the grains in it. They would put that big fork in there and get the wheat and throw it up in the air to separate it. Uh, they would take all that wheat and they would just keep throwing it and then they would beat it. And then they would throw it and then they would beat it. We think of sifting like you sift flour. But it was more physical. I mean, they would have to stomp on it or beat it or whatever to knock the grains loose throw it up in the air so that the chaff blew away from the grain itself. And that's what they did. And Satan wanted to do that to Peter. And again, we don't know what it was or for how long, but from using the terminology that the Bible uses, he put him through it. And he was allowed to do that. He was given permission. But God does everything all things work together for good to them that love the Lord, to them that are the called according to his purpose. So something good had to come out of this. Uh, when the, uh, Satan was allowed uh, to take and to sift Peter like that, something good had to come out of it because the Bible tells us all things work together for good. So what good could have come out of it? Well, listen to what uh, Jesus said. I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. First thing was, through this his faith was increased. His faith grew through this situation, through this circumstance, whatever it was uh, uh, that Satan put him through. And he goes on and he says, and when thou art converted, and that word converted means when you come back. How many of you, when you're going through the situation, you're going through the trial, and you're going through uh, your problem or, or whatever it is, drift away from God? I'm not saying... Uh, you turn your back on God and walk away. I'm not saying you backslide or anything like that. But your relationship with God lacks. And, and you grow further away. So he's telling Peter here, uh, when you go through this, when you come back, when you are converted, strengthen the brother. Peter went through this. Uh, Satan was allowed to do this. God permitted this to happen uh, so that through this, uh, Peter's faith would grow and also that he would learn how to go through this situation because he said, when you come back, you can strengthen the brethren. 
You can use your experience, uh, what you've been through, uh, how God brought you through.